What's up everybody, Tommy here. Some of you guys might know me from the Fakescape community SDQ. Uh, this is my tutorial on realistic filming with a fisheye lens in session. Now, since the new replay editor update dropped, I've noticed that a lot of people have had trouble getting started with filming. The editor has tons of potential and it is relatively easy to use at the end of the day. It may just seem like a lot to take in at first, so I'm gonna try and help you guys get over these humps. So the thing about realistic filming is that you want to try and replicate things that real life filmers do. There's actually more techniques involved in it than most people even realize. Lots of small things that have a huge impact on your filming that wouldn't even cross your mind until somebody actually tells you about them. I've been filming skateboarding for a few years now and it took me a whole year to even learn some of these things and realize what I was doing wrong, so I'm gonna save you the trouble, we're gonna go over some real life filming techniques and principles in this video and then get to how the editor itself works and how you can put these techniques into use. Alright, so here are the example clips that I got for this part. This little kickflip back over crook on the 9 stair handrail at the small banks in Brooklyn. And then at the other end of the banks, a little back tail kickflip out on a ledge. Now let's start camera position at first. So, first of all, you want to film low and close up so that the obstacle looks a little bit bigger and you fill up most of the shot with the action you want to actually focus on instead of filling it up with everything else going on in the background. See how this shot that I filmed from above the rail at the bottom of the set looks? And this shot of the back tail flip out that I filmed from far away? Both look pretty lame to be honest. Basically, the whole point of using a fisheye lens is that since it gets you a higher field of view, it allows you to fit more stuff into the shot from a larger area, which allows you to get up close and personal while keeping the skater and the spot in frame for the most part at least. Filming from far away with it makes no sense. Also, not only does zooming in completely defeat the purpose of the lens, but optical zoom is also impossible with a fisheye lens in real life, so don't do that, don't zoom in, just get closer. Now, whether you want to film backside or frontside depends on the trick. On the overcrook, I'm filming backside from the other side of the rail so you can get a good look at that lock, that pinch, see the trick properly, and have the tail end of the board just fly across the frame, which looks pretty sick in my opinion. On the crook, I'm staying pretty low on the rail because I landed it on it pretty late, but it doesn't look like garbage either when filmed from the top end of the rail. This is all just down to what you want to emphasize. The tail slide has a flip out, so that flip is the key thing that we want to focus on. So it looks a lot better in my opinion if I'm stationed closer to the end of the ledge where I pop out, rather than the beginning where I pop in. Other than those rules of thumb, the camera placement is very much up to you. I usually just scrub around the clip back and forth and move my camera around, just poke around a little and see what angle looks best to me. Next up is camera movement. First of all, you want to let the skater come in from one side of the frame and go out the other, with the skater being the closest to the filmer and the center of the frame at pretty much the midpoint of the key trick. See how much better it looks on the kickflip back over crook, for example. Compared to this shot where I kept the skater's center frame at all times, it's a night and day difference. Also on these single tricks, it makes it a lot easier for the viewer to see how big the obstacle is and how much distance you're actually covering if you're not really moving the camera from side to side a whole lot. I'm actually moving it just a little bit in the opposite direction of where the skater is going, right when the skater passes our imaginary filmer guy. Also if the skater seems to get a little too close at the midway point where there's too much stuff going on at the shot, you can kind of back off just a little bit right there, maybe crouch a little more and then get back once the skater has gone across the middle of the frame. On some tricks you can actually have the filmer roll in the opposite direction like I did on this shot of the back tail flip out. It really amplifies the speed, makes it look like the skater is going a lot faster, but it's a bit tricky to do though. Now let's get to the actual editor. So here we have a line that I recorded on the filling app. It's not the cleanest, but it'll do for this purpose. First things first, let's equip the fisheye lens. Go to Options, Camera, then go to Camera Lens. Make sure it's set to fisheye or fisheye wide. I prefer the more narrow one personally. The camera filter part is optional, that only affects colors. Now we're in the replay editor. 
Scrub back to where you want the clip to start on the timeline using the triggers, then hold RB and click the left stick to set the starting point. Since I went straight to the replay editor after rolling away, I'll hold RB and just slightly notch the right stick towards the right to put the ending point to the end of the timeline. Alternatively, you can scrub to the desired point on the timeline using the triggers and drop it there by holding RB and clicking the right stick. While holding RB, you can move the points around using the left and right analog stick. Then just hold RB and hit Y to zoom in on the timeline. When filming lines in real life with a fisheye lens, the filmer is typically following the skater up close on a skateboard. Knowing that, we need to plan ahead and figure out what kind of a path we want the filmer to follow. Also, we have to keep momentum and speed in mind. Certain things, such as grinding ledges, make the skater slow down a little, while the filmer is just rolling steadily in a straight line. At moments like this, the skater should fall behind a little. When the skater speeds up by pushing, it should catch up or pull ahead. After looking at it a little with Orbit camera, I decided I want to be right by the skater's side of the first trick almost perpendicular to him, have him slightly fall behind on the landing, stay in front of him up until the last trick, slow down right in the end letting the skater pass the filmer on the last trick and come to a stop as the skater pops out and rolls away. To keep your speed stable, keep track of your camera position relative to the skater. If you're behind the skater in the first key and in front on the next one, that means that between those keyframes your filmer is going to go faster than the skater and overtake the skater. Speed equals distance covered divided by time taken. So the closer these keyframes are to each other on the timeline, the quicker that overtake is going to be. Lastly, since the editor draws a smoothed out path through all the keyframes you set for the camera motion, you may want to use that to your advantage. Build your initial drafts on key points only with less total keyframes and make adjustments when needed. Also, just a quick little tip, don't put keyframes too close to each other. Now, let's begin by making sure we have free camera selected and camera keyframe selected. You can switch keyframe types using the left and right buttons on the D-pad, camera modes with X. My workflow is this. First, I go to the start of the clip, hide the UI by pressing Y, put the camera where I want it to be, hold RB and press down on the D-pad to drop a key. Then scrub forward to the next key point, drop a key there, and keep repeating the last two steps until you reach the end. Right here in the beginning, it helps you get a smooth acceleration if you do it in sync with the skater. A couple of keyframes is enough. Make sure that you're looking at the skater roughly from the same angle and distance on all of them. After that, just drop one where the skater starts setting up for the trick before he pops it. Then one where the skater pops, one in the middle of the trick, one where the skater lands, and then repeat. After the last landing, scrub just a little bit forwards and tilt the camera just a tiny little bit towards that direction where it was last turning to continue that motion and drop another key to smooth out the deceleration. You don't want it to look like your filmer just hit an invisible wall now do you? You always want to keep the board in frame as the top priority and as much of the skater as you can. So. I rewind the clip and watch it to see if the board or the skater goes out of frame at some point. Hit LB to engage montage view and put those keyframes into use. Play it back and forth, see if there's a point where you need to adjust something, stop at that point, make the necessary corrections to the camera angle, and then drop a key there. If you want to edit an existing keyframe, you can hold RB and press the right and left buttons on the D-pad to navigate between keyframes, then just make whatever adjustments you need. Hold RB and press the down button on the D-pad to update the keyframe. You can delete a keyframe by holding RB and pressing the up button on the D-pad. I also use camera roll a little bit. Roll slightly to the left when the skater is on the left hand side of the filmer and roll right when the skater is on the right hand side. You can do that by using the triggers while holding RB. On these points in the timeline, where there is a huge gap between keyframes, I add some slight movement to make it feel just a little bit more alive, such as some camera shake to give it that handheld feeling. Now here's the finished product.
thank you for watching. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, just feel free to post them in the comment section below. Yeah, that's about it. See ya.